Give us your opinion on what you think about culture. Does culture build, does it destroy, or are all traditional practices embraced for the sake of being embraced, or are they actually helpful in our society? So, Apostle, just within 30 seconds, mm. how would you describe tradition or culture? Okay, culture, I respect it. Mm -hmm. I embrace it. Because before we became educated, before we became what we are, mm -hmm. we grew up in the environment of culture, and we were brought up by those people who knew it well, how it should, you know, come into our lives and begin to blend us. Yes. So, on the overall, I respect culture, but there are some great areas in some certain cultures, because culture is wide, according to, diff to tribes, the area where you grew up from, and the people who raised you, and they know what they, are, they were doing, what they were not doing. Yes. So... It's a matter of selecting what is best for you. Yes. Not one person choosing it for you when it doesn't mean well with you. That one, it may not sit well. Mm -hmm. It may not sit well. If we bring it back home, mm -hmm. if we look at, let's say, certain traditional ceremonies, Apostle. Yeah. If there's a practice that may, that evokes the Holy Spirit or invites the Holy Spirit and invites the presence of God, mm -hmm. there's definitely a practice that is going to invite demons. Mm -hmm. Now, there's certain practices in our country, or let me just say in the African culture, that That's are very right. questionable. For example, uh, there's this traditional ceremony where a chief, uh, after a cow has been slaughtered, mm. has to drink the blood of that mm. cow. Mm. So now you question yourself to say, how is that bringing glory to the name of God? So don't you think certain culture practices are a way of evoking demons? You see, that one is very clear in the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 28. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, there are about 112 casings of the behavior and the conduct and the, how human beings have been evolving and what they have been bringing into. So that such type of, it's not only that one of drinking blood. There's, in, in, when you go in the Bible, uh, Molesh, there was God of Molosh, God of Molosh and um, Manasseh, uh, King Manasseh. Yes. He ruled Israel at a certain point. He used to sacrifice babies. He used to do a lot of otters taking their children to the gods and sprinkling them with beer, traditional beer, and all those things. Those things the Bible categorically, it forbids. It forbids. Leviticus 19, the whole chapter, it forbids. So, such cultures, you know, they are primitive, so to say. They are primitive, okay? Because we are living in a civilized world where we even call the elite people. They, we, we call people, the journalists, the word, and they begin to see those things. And when they ask you, they say, don't ask us, just see what we do, that's how we do it. You know, we need an explanation somewhere, okay? So, drinking blood, it is forbidden in the Bible. Now, looking at certain traditions, like Apostle said earlier, there's certain traditions that encourage, that encourage, you know, pride, that, in, that don't encourage equality or equity. So, do you think these traditions actually bring chaos in a home more than they actually bring peace? Uh, they encourage uh, pride or not equity in, in terms of uh, uh, as far as husband and wife is concerned? Yes, or just an example to say um, there's this tradition to say, okay, yes, wives have to be submissive to the husbands, isn't it? But maybe let's say in a situation where you're tired, you've just knocked off from work, you're tired as a wife, and then you're still expected to cook, you're still expected to clean the house, and let's say if you ask your husband to say, okay, could you help me with maybe just making food for yourself, I'm tired, and someone says, I can't do that, that's your duty, you have to do it as a woman. Don't you feel these traditions kind of bring chaos in a home as compared to bringing peace? Yeah, the reason why they bring chaos, Diana, is because most of... Uh, uh, married men and women have not been oriented uh, when it comes to marriage yes the bible does teach that uh, a man a woman must respect his husband like sarah who's who should be their role model yes. who called abraham as my lord now respect doesn't equate abuse mm -hmm. you 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 give an example to say a wife comes back home she's tired and she really needs some rest and then the, 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 the husband still wants her to cook for him and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't think that's uh, respect. That borders on, uh, I think, abuse. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, she's a human being. And as much as she's supposed to respect you as a husband, but you must understand that she's not a donkey. She's not a horse. She needs some rest. Love tells you to say she needs to rest. When she says no to your directive, it doesn't mean that she has disrespected you. She has uh, uh, breached the uh, uh, traditions of uh, uh, respecting your husband. I don't think so. Okay. But the tradition of respecting your husband, yes, the Bible does endorse that. Mm -hmm. Wives must respect their husbands, but not that kind of respect that you alluded to. Where <laughs> you're being abused, no.
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, Apostle Mtege, yes. um, what do you think is the best way to actually abolish these practices or to do away with these traditions? Because talking to people may not be enough. So what do you think is the best action or the best way to do away with these practices? You see, the best way the Bible says, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed. My people. Not the devil's people. Apostle, but before you continue, okay. we have a caller. <laughs> Good morning to you. Okay, we've lost the caller. Apostle. Okay. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or rejecting it. That's, okay? right. That's right. So, we need to continue teaching ourselves. And because such traditions, they are in the minds of the oldest. Those who are old and the, they just live in the yesterday. That's right. They, That's they, don't, they don't want to understand the today, the tomorrow. They don't understand. When you talk about the future, future does not look like the past, okay? Past is past, and the future is future. From the time of Zinjastropas, all those, you know, Mohabiris, broken hero man, who can agree to live that life? Who can agree? Nobody, okay? <laughs> so you find that some tradition, let me just speak to, I was analyzing as my evangelist here, was, you know, making a point. When a person dies, and they want to, to replace the name, of a person who has died. There is a lot that goes on there. Sometimes, okay, this canyula, kangenem kofini, kaja kanyula kasareko ya kavare, mufarikeni muvinde, or you know something like that, then you tie him something, then what? There is a lot that goes on. Just to, what is that? The person is gone. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 5, 6, the Bible says, when a person is dead, he knows nothing, his love, his hate, his whatever, is no longer in him. He has got no portion under the earth. Pastor, just hold that thought. Okay. We have a caller. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Alex. How are you doing? Hello. Alex, I can hear you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, madam. Kindly give us your contribution. If certain cultures are abolished, would that create a gap in society? Yes, can create some, some gap in the, in the society. In the sense that some of the culture, they are very vital. Like uh, the culture of circumcision where the pastor was saying that uh, there were some, some placards which were involved. Yeah. People were running a road concerning marriages when they go there. Like nowadays when they do it at a clinic, they will just go there and do whatever circumcision which they will do. Then they won't cancel you out to look after women how to look after your family. That's the reason why you have seen a lot of marriages that have been blocked, broken up. So it's important people to go to a traditional circumcision because there they will learn a lot concerning life. Thank you very much. Before you go, Mr. Alex, I would like to ask you a question. So um, if, if a 12-year-old is taken for circumcision and they're being taught about marriage, do you think that's okay? Yeah, there was a certain age which were, were being taken there. They were not taking any age. There was a certain age where somebody would go there and being taught about their life. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Alex. You're welcome. You see, the correct, thank you, Alex. So, the, the, the circumcision that we, 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 we see today, there is no age, it's ageless. Yeah? It's ageless. If you want, you can you instruct the doctors to circumcise your boy as early as two years. After sure. Jesus was circumcised, after eight years, eight days. Eight days, poor eight days, eight days. So, if at all, Tradition wants to tie that circumcision with the other teachings of marriage. What can an eight-year boy do? Marriage. Mm -hmm. How can an eight-year boy understand marriage? So let's just pick circumcision as hygiene, because in the olden days that was the baptism of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Whoever was not is not baptized or is not in connection with God. So you find that all these things that we do, tattoos, tattooing the body, what learns, what is taught is the brain. That's right. That's let us true. teach the brain. Not mutilating the body, cutting the brain, dismembering the body, disfiguring this, what and what, cutting this. We, all these things is an education syllabus that should be only taught in the brain, in the mind. Okay, That's why Jesus is saying, let this mind which was in me be also in you. Yes. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, So you find that uh, such tradition, there is no gap that is going to be created. 